Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, let's turn the kit off. Hurricane Hector's on the go on the floor. <laughs> Somebody likes to call it R2-D2. I can sort of see the point. But if I start filming and don't turn it off, it's just going to come back on again. So we'll just uh, press the off button. Shut the flipping thing up for a bit. There we go. Right, this video is about Dendrobium nobili types. Um, there is only one Dendrobium nobili, the species, and it's a bit of a fussy type. It's one of those where the winter rest has to be done, and has to be done quite near the mark, or you'll get few or even no blooms. It is it's quite a fussy species, but once it gets into the hybridizations, that fussiness just gets wiped out in the main, and you, you end up with a freely blooming Dendrobium type and the rest doesn't need to be anywhere near as severe or even take place in some cases <laughs> but this is my motley crew they're, 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 they've all got differences there are no two alike here quite honestly and they vary considerably um, but um, well first of all let's just have a look up the back here is my prima donna that's only just gone out of bloom those last year's two new canes which were stunted because it got repotted at the wrong time um, but it's now coming into growth I've got a couple of new growths and a new root system starting there's also signs of movement around other parts of the base so I should get at least two new canes on that and they should be up here by the end of the year that's this is the height the cane should be not down here so that one got grown quite well it didn't get grown badly last year it did the best it could in the circumstances now this one wedding bell is a flimsy one this one has tiny little bases to its canes absolutely minute and they get a bit fatter as they go up and then they get thinner towards the top again now again this grows on and off at different paces I mean this this is one of last year's new growth sticking out the top here that's the biggest cane it's ever done I was expecting it to stay at that height and then suddenly it sticks another six inches on the top it now is so top heavy it won't stand up it has to lean in between two other plants for support or it needs to go in a heavy clay pot or something on the outside of the pot it's in yeah, so that's that one very attractive blooms and a late bloomer you could say this is a late bloomer but it's not I've only just bought this and they can be bought into bloom at the nurseries at any time of year they're forced into bloom ready to sell so that they've always got a constant supply in bloom um, in future years when you own one that you buy out of season it will kick back into its normal period and what I call the big blousy nobilies like this one you know with the large blooms in small clusters of two threes and fours at each leaf joint um, their normal blooming season is late winter early spring um, that's when they bloom that's when the prima donna would normally be in bloom although that one had a slightly staggered blooming this year um, this one next year um, it's probably going to push a few blooms out near the base of these existing canes and I've, at the moment I've got one new growth I'm expecting more <clears throat> whether they grow as big and fat as that I don't know this is nursery grown stuff here you know we can't always compete with that so that's that one uh, this apparently is a nobly type, but um, this is Jarak Firethorn Brownie. That was one of the big box orchids. It's growing. I don't know how big it's going to get. I don't know how young a plant it is. But it's grown a nice new growth. It's got nice leaves, so it's coming on. How many years off blooming that is, I haven't got a clue. Now this one is the Lovely Virgin Variety Angel. That, that's Kiki's in effect. And it did have some blooms. Any that have bloomed will have pop-ups if they're not currently in bloom. So uh, I'll show you this. Um, pretty little blooms. And these kikis were taken off the mother plant, which is like a medium-sized one that just grew wrong. It never grew right for me. But I've got a nice new growth coming at the base here. And we have the start of a new root system. That root system's actually getting around the pot. Yeah, although it looks like it's just starting. It's been running a while now. So this one's picking up nicely now. Um, and it has bloomed, so that. This one's just going out of bloom. This is Stardust Firebird. At least it better be. Yeah, Stardust Firebird. 
Um, people have had this one because it comes around quite often. It's not an easy plant to grow really well. It is classed as a nobly type, but there's not a lot of nobly in it. It's only about 12-15% nobly, and the rest is other stuff. Um, there's quite a large amount of unicum in there, I would suspect, looking at the coloration and the shape of the blooms. But, um, yeah, I've never grown it well, but again, that's the one that came out of the big box. All right, this is a new one, a gifted one. This is Lucky, Lucky Summit or other. It won't have a tag on it, no typical but um, I decided to mount this I haven't got you know, I haven't attempted to mount many nobilies in fact this was one of the first I thought at the time but there is another one um, this has got new growths coming no sign of brand new roots yet but I've got new growths they will be followed by new roots and it has a perfectly good working root system even though they're old roots um, this has had a bit of a problem at some point in its growth because I've got crinkled leaves there so it probably got a bit dehydrated at some point or another I haven't got a clue what that's going to look like it's a new one <laughs> and then this is what's left of my what was a giant plant spring dream of pollen and this was a kiki from Rachel so I've got rid of all of my original plants and I've just kept this one this is coming into growth new growth just starting and again generating a new root system so that's just coming into growth and this, again, was from Rachel. This is Comet King. It did not like being in a pot for some reason, so I mounted that a while back, and now it's growing. Nice new growth and new roots. So, uh, whether you mount nobly types or pot them is entirely up to you, but some of them do grow huge. And um, they look best upright. You can turn them upside down if you like. You know, they would end up looking more like that. That does work, yeah? But they naturally grow up like upright and they can become top heavy. Now, looking after these, it's not difficult. My battery is about to go, so I'm just going to put another one in. I'll be back. Oh, sorry about that. That's the first time I've ever noticed that. The little picture of the battery on the screen goes yellow, and then when it's about to go, it, I know it goes bright red. I've seen that before. I hadn't seen the yellow colour before. It gave me like a three-minute warning, <laughs> which is nice. Anyway, luckily I've got spares. Um, anyway, where did I get to? Right, looking after noblies. The best seasonal care, I believe, is best started in the spring or the start of the growth period. Because if you buy one that's a bit out of season, that growth period might end up being at a funny time of year. So let's, let's go from where the new growth starts. What are we going to do with the dendrobium when the new growth starts? Feed and water well. <laughs> now, during their growing season, the nobilies do not need high light. I would suggest medium to good light is plenty. They don't need the high light to grow. Um, they would naturally come from a place where they would have leaf cover above them during their growing season in the main. So, you know, they would be sheltered from the brightest light. Um, <laughs> that's me saying where they come from. None of these come from anywhere. They're all hybrids. But they don't need the high light for growth. Good light. Certainly not cattleya type light. They don't need that. So, you know, if, you've got, if you have to stagger your plants because you're on window sills, these don't need to be the ones at the front during their growing season. So during that growing season, they've got to mature their canes. You've got to do that in a year. Well, far, half a year. You've got to do that. Yeah? Now, okay, on the smaller ones, but it's still relative to the plant size. Yeah? You're looking at getting a cane at least as big as the previous ones, possibly bigger depending on whether it was dwarfed, you know, in the nursery before you bought it. So this one could have been dwarfed down. This could actually get bigger than that. I don't know until a new growth finishes. But um, yeah, so medium to good light, oncidium light will do, maybe even a bit less. You know, they're not fussed in the growing season. They don't want to be in deep shade, obviously, you know, in the dark. Um, where they've got torches and things, you know, no, that, not that sort of light, but reasonable light for the growing season and push them hard, feed and water well. When these are actively growing, pushing up these strong new canes and extending their root systems, you'd have a hell of a job to overwater it. And then I don't like the expression overwater, water too often. 
<laughs> but try not to let them dry out in that growing season. Keep them going. Push them. Yeah, And you can push your feed levels at that time of year as well. Now everybody feeds differently, but I would suggest that nobody's in active growth pushing those canes on do not want the sort of feed where they get two or three flushes followed by a five course meal in one go. They would prefer to snack. So they like regular, constant feed all the time in that growing season. No gaps. Um, if you're worried about salt build up in your pot, then give them a flush now and again by all means. Don't, don't neglect that type of care. But these need feed. They, they've got to do big canes. They've got a lot of growth to put on. So feed and water well. Now there will come a time into the autumn, some later than others, where the new canes will produce a terminal leaf. They finish growing. I was, gonna, I was hoping this would be one but it's not. This is still growing. Um, this is a terminal leaf. How can you tell? It's at a different angle to the others and it's, it's obviously normally it's a bit smaller than the others but the leaves come out and do that. That's their natural thing. Alternate up the cane, yeah? The last one tends to stick up. Terminal leaf. There's a terminal leaf on that cane. Now that's dropping its leaves, that cane, but it's still an upright leaf compared with those that flip over each side. Yeah? Uh, have got any others? Uh, most of the others are still growing. So there will come a time when that terminal leaf appears on your, on your growths. Now you've got to watch this period because you might have two canes still growing and one has finished. Well if any of them are still growing you should still be putting that feed and water in. But as you start to see those terminal leaves, depending on how many canes you've got, the plant is naturally coming to the end of its growing season. So what are you going to do with your food and water? What would you be feeding and watering when it's finished growing? What's it going to do with all that food and water when it's finished growing? It's common sense, isn't it? So as you get into autumn, there will be a natural period where you can reduce your feed down. You can do it over a period of a few weeks, month at the most, I would suggest. And this is normally going to be uh, end of October into November this will happen in the UK, in my environment where I've got good light. Yeah, in a home that might happen earlier in the season, but it's a visible thing. You can see it. So you don't need a calendar. You don't need a diary. Chuck all that stuff away. And any book that says do something on a certain date, chuck it away. <laughs> Just look at the plant. There will come a time when it's finished growing for the year. And at that point, it doesn't need feeding. And it's not going to use anywhere near as much water. So it's going into its rest period. Now, for a nobly hybrid in your environment, the one thing you must really try and do is up that light level. Because we're now into November. You know, we're heading towards Christmas. We're all thinking about getting Christmas cards going and stuff. Our days are short in the UK. You might have supplemental lighting, yes, but naturally our days are short. Plants have finished growing. They're not going to do a lot with you know, artificial lights, are they? They're finished growing. They don't need it all. But what they do need is an increase in light level. So if your supplemental lighting can provide that, that's good. If not, get them in a window where they get the brightest light you can give them. Don't let the leaves touch the glass. <laughs> and keep, that a, keep a little distance there because you'd be surprised how cold glass can get in the winter when you get down near freezing on the outside of the glass. For the first inch or so in, inside the glass, it radiates cold, yeah? even though your house might feel warm. So get these in the brightest light you can give them. If you can, cool them down to some degree. Yeah? Now with the hybrids, that degree doesn't have to be as much as it would be for the species. And some are going to bloom anyway, even without cooling down. But the, the thing that's probably most important is get that light level up as bright as you can through the winter. Yeah, especially with our shorter days and stuff like that. And if you can, cool them down a bit. They're not going to need any food in the winter time. They've finished growing, they've done all that. Yeah, but you've got to watch the watering. 
Um, none of this stopping watering for two and a half months, forget all that cobblers. Um, what you would end up if you did that was that a cane that looked like that once would end up looking like that. That's lost all its ability to store anything. It's shriveled. Yeah? That's I picked that one deliberately. That's my bad care why that one got in that state. That's not what it should look like. <laughs> you know, here's an old leafless cane on a nobly. It's not shriveled. Yeah? Older canes, they're not shriveled. They shouldn't be. So at the first sign of shriveling, you know you're not giving quite enough water. And as long as you don't leave it too long and get them, let them get too shriveled, a little bit of water and they should plump up again. And that's what you're trying to achieve. Just that bordering on starting to shrivel, but not letting it actually happen. And I mean, depending on what media you've got them in, you might have to put a trickle of water in every two weeks, three weeks, possibly. Yeah? So you've just got to watch what you're doing during that winter period. And then, as the days start to get a bit longer, you'll start seeing your buds. It seems to be the light that triggers them. The longer days trigger the buds. Now, at first, you will just get little nubbins showing. Yeah? There's nothing much happening. The plant has got more than enough reserves at that point. You don't suddenly need to start feeding and watering. Not yet. Wait a bit. And then gradually, they'll start to move out. And then they'll often branch, because a lot of noblies have two, three, or even four blooms per spike. As soon as you see those buds starting to separate or showing an actual shape of a bud, now the plant can do with some help. Not loads. Not all at once. So your watering frequency can increase gently and introduce a little bit of feed to help those buds grow. Otherwise, if you don't do anything, right up to the point where they bloom, like it says in some of the books, it says don't start feeding and watering till you see new growths. A lot of them don't start their new growth till the blooms are over. Where do you think the plant is going to get the energy to produce all those blooms? It will totally drain every resource in the plant. And the canes that are left behind will be shriveled and useless. They'll have lost their ability to store anything. So this is all logic, really. You know, you're just looking at it as, as a plant, irrespective of whether it's an orchid or not. So um, <clears throat> as the buds start to show, and start to grow away from the cane, a little bit more water, start introducing a light feed. Yeah? And then at some point, you will start getting the new growths again. And we're back to where we started, feed and water well. <laughs> so that's the sort of cycle. What you grow your noblies in, a lot of that will depend on where you grow them. Now in my winter time, they're going to get pretty cold. As I said, my thermostat's set to 12 degrees C minimum, nighttime temperature in here in the winter. That's quite cold. Plenty cold enough for nobly hybrids to do well. <laughs> they love it. Um, but during that period I don't want them wet so I tend to plant mine in bark no moss that way in the winter time if I water them they're still gonna dry relatively quickly because of the sheer amount of air space in around the root area yeah so um, obviously if they're mounted they dry quickly anyway so you haven't got a problem have you <laughs> and a mounted nobly during that winter rest period is going to need watering more often than in a pot. You might even be watering it every fourth or fifth day. You've just got to stop those canes shriveling. So it's variable. It's depending on your plant, your environment, your temperature and what it's planted in. Yeah. Now this one here has just been repotted. That's in medium bark. Nothing else. Yeah. Uh, this one over here, because I want to grow it on, that had a little tiny bit of moss added in there, but it's in the tiniest of pots. So come next winter, which is a long way away, I'll still be able to give that a bit of water without it staying wet long, because by then that pot will be full of roots. 
you listening, <laughs> talking to you. Um, yeah, so that, that's my theory. Now this one, when it's finished blooming, I'm going to have to repot that right in the middle of the season. But for this plant, it's not the middle of the season. The way this one grows, the middle of the season is autumn. And its canes grow on through the winter. They're still growing. That's last year's growth. It's still growing. It's the nobly type. Allegedly. <laughs> I don't know how much nobly's in this, but there is a reasonable amount. Um, just by the shape of the blooms and the double markings on the uh, lip. Um, anyway, so that's my how I look after my nobilies. And um, don't worry too much about getting that absolutely spot on. The hybrids are quite tolerant of being a bit off. The species, not so much. <laughs> you need to get that one right. And there's quite an assortment here, you know. Spindly wispy ones. Tall fat ones, although I can't take credit for that, I've only just bought it. Um, this one's a monster, the prima donna, that grows absolutely enormous. Um, it isn't at the moment, because I've only got a tiny little bit of my plant left. Somebody else has got the big bit, yeah? And then I've got some unknowns. I don't know what that's going to do, yeah? This, m the mother plant that that came off of, was at least twice the size of that. So this one's got some growing to do, but that's just kikis. Um, even though they bloomed. This is new to me. I don't know how big this is going to get. Um, I don't think this is going to be a monster by any means. Um, you know, those may be the largest canes it's ever going to get. But we'll have to wait and see. And I've got no idea what the blooms are going to look like. Spring Dream of Pollen. Um, that's, that will be three times the size of that when it's finished. Now, whether this latest new growth and any others that it does this year achieve that size or not, I don't know. Because this plant is starting from scratch. Comet King is a medium to large one. That should look like that when it's up to full size. So they do vary. So anyway, nobilies. Looking after them, um, what, to keep, what to keep them in. Um, temperature range for nobilies. Um, the cooler you can get them in their winter rest period, the better. Without being silly, don't chuck them out in the snow. <laughs> you know, Roger said get it as cold as possible. I put mine in the freezer. Duh. Be sensible. Still a plant. <laughs> mine are happy going down to 12 degrees C, nighttime temperatures. Um, sometimes in the winter they don't get up much higher than that during the day. But my nobilies used to bloom before I went down that low when I only used to go down to 15 degrees. They still bloomed. And I know people who have got nowhere to get their nobly hybrids cool. You know, they live in an apartment where the temperatures are quite even all the time. But they still bloom. All you're debating is how well they bloom. You know, they're going to do their best the closer to this, you know, annual seasonal cycle you can get. They'll still bloom without it. You just might not get as many. That's, that's the, you know, that is it. That's the downside of being a long way off getting this seasonal variation is you won't get as many blooms you'll still get some if you want to play games and have some real fun get the species and try and do that lighter <laughs> that's why i haven't got it i've just read in so many places it's too fussy but if i ever see a nice plant of the species i will get it because i now know i can do what it needs as i have got that drop in the winter I can do it. I just haven't seen a good one. All I've seen is little kikis. So there we go. Um, these are not fussy. Um, they'll grow well in most environments, quite honestly. Um, I'd almost go as far as to say that if you grow Phalaenopsis well, you can probably dot some of these in amongst them, because your care is okay. And these are not so fussy with the old humidity as well. They'll tolerate lower humidity than some other orchids will. Um, these will tolerate normal room environments as long as it's not like a desert in there, yeah? And they like a bit of air movement. They'll probably do without it. <laughs> you know, they're quite easy going. So, um, out of the dendrobiums, they are probably the easiest to grow. Um, although I would say the Latorias are pretty easy, providing you stick to what they want, which is nothing like what these want. They're, they're quite different, but if you can do those, the environment that those want, those are easy too. 
Quite honestly, the bottom line is there is no such thing as a difficult orchid. What is difficult is getting its environment right, and some of them are critical. You deviate from what they like, and they'll start going downhill. They are that fussy. Luckily, there aren't so many of them around, and most of the time you, you'd have a job to buy one of them because they're not in cultivation because they're just too difficult. <laughs> so there we go. That's a chat on nobelies. I hope that helps. And um, anything I've missed or anything you're not clear on or anything like that, chuck it in the comments. You know, I've got nothing else to do all day but deal with your comments. <laughs> Only joking. So there we go. Some information on nobelies. Um, vast array of colours from pure white right through to deep reds out into the yellows and oranges and every shade of pink and purple you can think of so uh, yeah and orange as well yeah so uh, it's there good variety and good variety of bloom sizes as well you know and shapes so quite rewarding I find they were my first dendrobiums that's where I started before I got silly and had everything I could lay my hands on <laughs> That's slowed up a bit now. <laughs> Not going so mad. Anyway, thanks for dropping by. See you next time.